Welcome back to Support Report, where we look at rectangles and scream! I did it! I broke down the show to its bare essentials! It's uncharted territory from here, anything can happen! We kick off part 2 with the brand new Morphtronic support, which I was very happy to see as this is an archetype I think is very cool, regardless of position. Gadget Gamer, Yu-Gi-Oh's very first gamer, is a great starter as it basically gives you 3 extra copies of your best playmakers, along with putting a level 6 on the field. Giving you an actual reason to run Gadget Holder is the last thing I expected Morphtronic support to pull off, but it's a great synchro material and can be very handy for setting up the graveyard, so props for that, it's not Falling ass anymore. Even if the search effect is negated, you still get a tribute if you have a Morphtronic in your hand, so this is just an overall great card. Now, for the concerning thing, why is the gamer shooting out six letters from his keyboard? Continuing on, Morphtronic Telephone is an absurdly good extender. The revive is basically guaranteed, it resets all your important once per turn effects, is a soft once per turn itself, so you can keep reusing it with some easy setup, and it also heals you because you never know when 1 to 600 life points can stop on OTK. The defense position effect is too random to be consistent graveyard setup. Up, but at this point it's a common theme with the deck, so I can live with it. I am glad that in this age of giving every single card multiple hard ones per turns, Morphtronics keep rocking with the non-stop synchro loop shenanigans. Sure, it's mostly because they're still not great, so they can afford it, but it's appreciated nonetheless. Morphtronics Cannon is a bit costly given the summoning condition and the effect, but it's mostly worth it and the deck has ways of easily recovering from those costs. While the archetype doesn't have the greatest back row, there is decent stuff in there, especially with the new support, essentially turning Scannon's search effect into even more swarming in play extension. It's cool that they made it a level 6 so you can revive it with Telephone, as this is finally our fabled Morphtronic monster that cannot be brought back with Junk Box. The defense position effect is, again, very much an afterthought, but so is the way you put your shirt on today and you're doing just fine. Good card, moving on. Morphtronic Earphone, besides being an immaculately adorable 5Ds reference, is just a neat synchro. It basically does nothing by itself, but given how this archetype's whole thing is synchro climbing, and you inevitably end up with at least a savage border load on the field if the turn goes well, it's a nice addition. Turning any monster on the field into a tuner on summon, including itself, is pretty helpful in this deck, especially since the monster you summon with it will likely be jamming out with earphones as soon as it hits the field. Honestly, despite not being an archetypal card, the brand new Excel Synchro Stardust Dragon is a very good extender, so it might as well go alongside Earphone in the extra deck. I'd have some more things to say here, but the video isn't sponsored by Raycon, so there's not much point to it. Running one is okay, they come in pairs. The long-awaited Power Tool Retrain slash upgrade slash apology for Livestream Dragon came in the form of Power Tool Braver Dragon. Because the last guy we had was a loser. I'm not a fan of this level 9 having the swapped stats of the level 7 original, but admittedly you're supposed to compensate for that with the effect. Which in itself is not really a straight upgrade over the one of set original, and as you'd often want equips in your hand instead of all on one synchro on the field. Don't get me wrong, there's good generic stuff you can equip here to give it a bunch of protection or boost up its attack, but that also means you'd be running several cards intended exclusively for a big synchro which you may or may not end up summoning. However, the position change and negation effects decently make up for it, giving the deck some extra versatility, although without removal unless you use the new equip spell designed with this monster in mind. Life Extreme makes it beat over anything with less than 4000 attack, pops a card if a monster's battle position changes, and swaps it out for a lifestream dragon when it's gone. If you're committing to the braver equip loadout, this is as worth running as anything else, so with the negation you get from the card, it can be a very solid addition to your end board. Maybe if they had made the summon condition more specific to Morphtronics, they could have given it a stronger effect, but the way it is right now is acceptable, just not as a replacement for the classic. It's not putting repair unit in your hand when sometimes that's all that matters. Morphtronic Converter is yet another great extender, acting as a better archetypal transmodify. Putting the swap monster on top of the deck means cell phone can immediately resummon it, unless you fuck up really hard and somehow roll a zero. In addition to turning bricks on your field into playmakers, it's also semi-generic, in the off chance that you get to activate the defense position effect, but as per usual, you're running it for the attack one. Another coincidentally similar card was also released this year, that being Dimension Dice, which if you control a die roll card, tributes a monster to summon any die roll monster from the deck, which is much more useful in Morphtronics than in anything that would be running Gorgoth the Relentless. Both of these are equally worth running in a current version of the deck. Gadget Box is a free level 1 disguised as a continuous spell. It's also another use for the morph counters on your map and clocking, but we don't talk about that. This is searchable with Scannon and provides handy synchro materials, which the deck heats up with every play. That's all it does, but as far as clones of Jam Breeding Machine go, it's serviceable at 1. Their only trap in this batch is Morphtronic Impact Return. I don't really know what to make of this one. Sure, it's another anime adaptation, but using up a valuable monster in the hand to spin back row is still pretty weird, and the deck already has recovery options without the graveyard banish effect. Look, you've given us plenty of good stuff beforehand, so I'm willing to let this one slide because I'm so nice. 
What about toolbox, you ask? Sure, it's kinda useful, but it's not searchable and I don't like its attitude. On the other hand, I mostly very much like what was done with the deck here. While I would have preferred some slightly better synchros to really round up the presence of Morphtronics on board, I'm glad that they fully went in on their ridiculous potential for field building. It's a legitimately fun synchro toolbox deck that can end on an impressive amount of negates, all while utilizing their wacky die roll focus that stayed the centerpiece of the archetype since day one. It helps that their aesthetics are still as cute as ever, so my only wish for the eventual next support wave in about 10 years is that they give some love to the OTK playstyle well. On the topic of loop-heavy decks with a less appreciated beatdown variant, we also got a couple new Gem Knights recently. And going by the very first line on their new monster, Gem Knight Quartz, Konami is still very, very upset about the FTK. While the condition that the opponent needs to control a monster is pretty funny given the state of things with Gem Knights, the effect you get for the discard is kind of underwhelming in places where Brilliant Fusion is banned. You're definitely not grabbing Future Fusion with this one, so all that's left is their new spell card, which we'll get to soon. Running Black Garden does make it easier to get the effect off, but at that point you might as well run an actual Black Garden FTK deck. The recovery is fine, almost makes this archetype seem recent, and even though the limitation on the first effect can be a problem, it's still worth running because you don't really have much of a choice. Brilliant Rose is the only card in this patch that doesn't feel like it was purposely shot in the foot to avoid FTK interactions, even though it's not much of a playmaker on its own. The summoning condition discards for cost, which means it can't interact with Lazuli, but Obsidian and Gem Knight Fusion are fair game, especially the latter since you can recover it using the Fusion monster Brilliant Rose dumps from the extra deck. There is not much more point to the second effect, as copying type and attribute was something the deck already had access to, and copying the name is intended exclusively for Melodious. It's a good enough extender, but it won't have you reliving the deck's glory days or anything. Geminite Lady Rose Diamond is their brand new fusion monster, and while seemingly okay, it's also a tad confusing. Quartz is the only original fairy type in the deck unless you use Brilliant Rose, so the materials are a bit specific right off the bat. Next, it only protects your Geminite monsters once from effect destruction during the opponent's turn, which feels like one too many specifics for a protection effect in 2022. Finally, there's the quick effect that lets you pop a card your opponent controls when they activate a monster effect, but only on your turn. Mind you, it's not once per turn, hell, it's not even once per chain, meaning it can play through quite a few negates if you have Gemnite cards to banish, so that's easily the best thing about the card. On the other hand, it's nearly useless when going first, and you might get interrupted before you even make it when going second, so the whole design is just kinda baffling. It's not the worst, while also not really being what the deck needs, but I don't know what this deck needs. Maybe it's their new spell Scatter Fusion? No, it's not. This is almost a strictly worse brilliant fusion, requiring the opponent to control a monster, only letting you summon non-rock type gem knights, and locking you into the archetype for the rest of the turn. The upsides are that the fusions retain their stats, and you can use the effect each turn, but otherwise it's nothing special. Worth running as a bootleg brilliant, which is exactly what it's meant to be. I know the opponent's monster limitation is there because making gem knight support is not unlike trading a minefield, but honestly it just incentivizes people to use black garden even more. I don't really know how to feel about this support. It's as if in the effort to stray away from the rampant FTK focus and give Gem Knights some fighting power in other areas, they didn't commit enough to either and the deck is still stuck in its present variant, only a bit more consistent. No sweeping changes have been made to the playstyle and there is no reason to prioritize the attackers over the FTK enablers, which makes the whole thing come off like they also tried supporting the FTK game plan, but not too much? I'm not saying you can turn Gem Knights into a fun and varied beatdown deck with 4 cards, but if all future support is gonna be pussy footing around the FTK and therefore not resulting in any drastic upgrades for the archetype, then I'd rather not have any of it. Please, I just wanna hit things in the face with cool crystal people. Is that too much to ask? Closing off this video, we have the new Infernity spell, Return of the Reaper. This is overall just a really good piece of support. It's searchable, recovers your Infernities from anywhere, and even summons them from the hand in case it's clogged up. It also recovers itself upon losing an Infernity, so you can get right back into the duel if you survive the turn and start making your combos all over again. Usually I'm not too big on full-on anime characters appearing on the art of their deck support cards, but the Crashdown imagery here works great with the Infernity's theming, so this is yet another really cool 5Ds reference. Absolutely no complaints here- uh Wait, I'm getting a message from my informant. Oh, apparently the TCG name for the card has been revealed. Let's uh let's pull that up. Huh. Ha ha You are one creepy little punk. Ah. This creepy little punk ah. is gonna be